This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the religious broadcast services of the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Durham, North Carolina. It is our hope and prayer that as these services come to you today, you will be blessed by the ministry of song, the preaching of the word, and all that God has in store for us today. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come before your presence with thanksgiving. We thank you for another opportunity to enter into this place. We thank you for waking us up this morning, for allowing us the privilege of making our way to the house of prayer, allowing us to get up and meet, mingle, and co-mingle our voices together. As we embark upon this time of worship, we pray that your presence will be in this place. Let all that we do be done to your glory and to your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. At this time, we're going to be blessed with music from our soulist.
guess what? Mm -hmm. I've also got a blessing with my name. All right. All right. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Let me just remind you of Sunday school each Sunday at 10 a.m. and invite you to participate in the study of God's Word by calling or zooming in and uh, being a part of that study. We want to thank all of you who uh, came out this past Wednesday as we had prayer on the grounds and prayed for our young people as they are resuming their educational pursuits, uh, returning to school, yes, yes. and we thank God for you. We will be resuming our midweek uh, Bible study on the Wednesday following uh, Labor Day. And uh, we're going to have an exciting study. We're going to be doing a study of the book of Revelation. Ooh. So we want you yeah. to be a part. Oh, Revelation yeah. is a book that uh, frightens many folk. It's yeah, a book yeah. that uh, confuses many folk. And yeah. so hopefully uh, we will be able to uh, shed some light and inspiration uh, as we endeavor to study God's Word. Amen. Again, we thank you for your continuing support of the ministry here at Mount Sinai. If you desire uh, to plant a seed, you may do so by directing your contributions to Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church, 5222 Mount Sinai Road, Durham, North Carolina, 27705. Amen. Following the next election, we will have the message for the morning. Oh, how wonderful is his name. Yeah. Wonderful is his name. Wonderful. You might want to stand by for a minute because he's just so wonderful. Yeah. God just saved yeah. you. You've never failed.
beginning at verse 1 and continuing down to verse 5, the King James Version of the Bible, it reads this way. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Mm -hmm. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Speak, Lord, for your people hear it. Amen. For the time that is ours for preaching this morning, I want to preach from the subject, The Big Lie. Mm -hmm. The Big Lie. In 1925, Adolf Hitler, in a speech entitled Mein Kampf, coined the term The Big Lie. According to Hitler, a big lie was a principal tool of propaganda defined as the use of a lie so colossal that no one would believe that someone could have the imprudence to distort the truth so infamously. The execution of the strategy and the mindset of those prone to utilize it can be summarized in a report issued by the Office of Strategic Services, which later became the CIA. Walter Lang, in that report, wrote about Hitler. He said, and I quote, Hitler's primary rules were never to allow the public to cool off, mm -hmm. never to admit a fault or wrong, mm -hmm. never concede that there may be some good in your enemy, Jesus. never leave room for alternatives, mm -hmm. never accept blame, concentrate on one enemy at a time, and blame that enemy for everything that goes wrong. Yes, right. He went on to say that people will believe a big lie mm -hmm. sooner than a little one. Come on. All right. And that if you repeat that lie frequently enough, yes. people will sooner or later believe it. Yes. Now that's what Hitler believed and articulated in 1925. Now let's fast forward. It's November 2020. And the term, the big lie, was introduced into our political journal. The term was coined in response to Donald Trump's insistence that the presidential election was rigged and stolen from him and that in fact Joe Biden did not win. Mm -hmm. This narrative was promoted by Trump and his radical supporters and ultimately led to a riot and an attempted coup on January 6th by 
radicals, many of whom indicated that they were following the orders of their president, mm -hmm. Donald Trump. Yeah. These rioters stormed the Capitol in an attempt to stop the certification of the Electoral College vote, which affirmed that not only did Joe Biden win the popular vote, All right. but he also won the Electoral College vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump mm -hmm. and his now disgraced legal team, right. Rudy Giuliani, and Sidney Powell, mm -hmm. along with the pillow guy, Mike Lindell, mm. contested the outcome in more than 60 state and federal courts. Ooh. And all of these courts rejected the claim yes. that Trump had won the election mm. or that it was stolen from him because of voter fraud. Yes. Nonetheless, mm -hmm. the radical right continue to make the claim that Trump won the election and they went on to say that he would be reinstalled in the office on the 13th of August. Well, I believe this is the 30th day of August and uh, last time I checked, he still wasn't back in office. Yes, sir. Now, now, mind you, this claim is being made without one shred of evidence. Even attempts by Trump to pressure the, his Justice Department and election officials in Georgia and Arizona and Pennsylvania and other states that he lost met with no avail. And in order to push back on Trump's false narratives, his rhetoric and that of his supporters was labeled the big lie. Mm -hmm. Now, in the words of another disgraced American president who was forced to resign from office, Richard Nixon, let me make this perfectly clear. Many politicians, Republicans, Democrats, and independents, have the proclivity to be less than honest in stating their policies and plans and in attacking those are their opponents. Mm -hmm. But the 2020 election took it to a new level. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here we are almost 10 months removed from the election. And yet rather than having been abated, reduced, or eliminated, the big lie continues to flourish. Mm -hmm. The big lie has now become the battle cry for an irrelevant political party mm -hmm. that has no agenda mm -hmm. other than a thirst for power yes. and blocking legislation that has the overwhelming support of the American people. Mm -hmm. Mitch McConnell does what he does mm -hmm. because he knows at the end of the day little Joe Manchin is not going to stand up and be counted. Now, now, it would be one thing if the big lie was just promoted by a group of sore losers. But the reality is that the big lie is doing extreme damage to our democracy. As evident by more than 30 voter suppression bills which have been passed in Republican-controlled legislatures across the country, uh, ensuring that people of color mm -hmm. find it more difficult to vote. Mm -hmm. yes. These bills are designed to ensure that fairness is no longer an item as it relates to our voting rights. Right. As a matter of fact, they were introduced under the guise of ensuring fairness mm -hmm. and confidence in our electoral process. Mm -hmm. now, now, that's another lie. Mm -hmm. It's a lie because no one has been able to produce any credible evidence of widespread voter fraud or lack of confidence in the electoral process. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but it is the epitome of hypocrisy because in 2016, 
when there was concrete evidence of Russia interfering in our election, these same Republicans were awfully silent. Mm -hmm. Fact of the matter is that those who support the big lie do it because they know they cannot win when the playing field is level. Yes, sir. The fact of the matter is those who support the big lie see the growing number of people of color who are participating in the political process and they are attempting to disenfranchise us. The fact of the matter is that they see the growing number of young people on college campuses hmm. who have become politically involved and now they're trying to stymie their influence. For those who support the big lie, they need to go ahead and admit that they believe the Constitution was not meant for everybody. All right. mm. Why not admit that they want our democracy to reflect the needs and the desire of white men? Why not admit that you see the writing on the wall? That the latest census didn't have to tell you that there was a declining number of white folk in America. Why not admit that over the next few decades, you will be in a minority and people of color will comprise the majority? Mm -hmm. Why not admit that the big lie is designed to divide this country and call our democracy into question? Mm -hmm. And now watch this. I, 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 I'm not surprised when politicians have a problem with the truth. But for the life of me, I cannot understand how there can be those who call themselves evangelical Christians and yet at the same time support the big lie. Come on now. Maybe, maybe, maybe they've not read or maybe they have forgotten Psalm 101 7 it says he that worketh deceit shall not dwell in my house and he that telleth lies shall not continue in my sight yes, sir. Just a few weeks ago I saw where an evangelical pastor down in Florida Was arrested and charged for his role in the January 6th insurrection He said if he was at the Capitol at the behest of President Trump who had the election stolen from him. Mm. Now this is an evangelical pastor who has bought into the big lie mm. because Donald Trump said so. Mm. I, I don't know about you, mm. but Donald Trump would not be my role model for truth. <laughs> ah, that's right. According to the Washington Post, Donald Trump was documented as having told 30,573 lies or misstatements in four years. Ooh. I want you to get this. Mm. In 1,460 days, Donald Trump told 30,573 lies. Mm. Th th that's an average of almost 21 lies per day. Mm -mm -mm. Almost one lie an hour. Mm. If you up 24 hours a day. So, so therefore the big lie ought not surprise you because uh, he had a lot of practice in line. <laughs> so let me talk to my evangelical brothers and sisters. How can you claim to be Christian and yet subscribe to what you know is not the truth? How can you allow yourself to be held in bondage by the lies of a politician who is only concerned about himself. Mm. Yeah. How can you remain silent in the face of injustice and yet claim that you stand for racial reconciliation? How, how can you remain silent when clearly this is the time to speak? Yeah. By your very actions, there's an incongruence between your words and your actions. Mm -hmm. I, I read in a book, it says a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And your silence and your complicity is bearing rotten fruit. Mm -hmm. 
You cannot stand up in the pulpit and preach out of one blood came all nations and yet refuse to take a stand when radicals are hell bent on destroying our democracy, promoting the big lie. I know it's not easy to stand up to a bullet. It, it takes courage to do right. And, and if you're going to claim the Lordship of Christ, you've got to have the courage to stand, even if you have to stand by yourself. Yes, you, you've got to have the courage of the three Hebrew men who, when they were forced by the king to bow, made up in their mind that they were not going to bow. And they said, King, we are not going to answer you because the God we serve is able to deliver us out of your hands. But even if he does not, yeah. We still not going by down. It's time for Bible believing Christians to stand up and tell politicians to do the right thing. And doing the right thing means acknowledging the worth and value of all God's creation and reflecting uh, on the fact that God has made us to be one in Christ. You got to stand up and speak the truth. And speaking the truth is acknowledging that the big lie is just that, yeah. a lie. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I know I've already upset enough of y'all today. Because y'all said he come here preaching that political stuff. <laughs> so let me see if I can put some Bible with my political oh, stuff. Oh, Lest I hold you too, too long. Uh, let, 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 let's see if we can, we can tie this together. The, the big lie is awful. But, but let me suggest to you that the big lie is not nearly as bad as the biggest lie. Mm. The biggest lie ever told is found in our text. You, you're familiar with the narrative. God created the world. It's part of God's creation. God made man and woman, Adam and Eve. God gave them a magnificent home for them in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Gave them free reign of all of God's creation mm -hmm. other than eating or touching the fruit from the tree of the wisdom of good and evil. Yes. God said to Adam and Eden, the more you eat or touch, you shall surely die. Yes, yes. Did you get this picture? Here they are. In the Garden of Eden, yeah. a perfect place. Perfect place. God made everything pleasant to their sight mm -hmm. and good for them to eat. Yeah. Adam and Eve had a perfect relationship. Mm -hmm. They were naked, yet not ashamed. Mm -hmm. They had nothing to hide from each other. Jesus. They had no kids, so every night was a date night. Mm -hmm. God gave them everything they needed. <laughs> They had no in-law problems. Right. They had no boring meetings to attend. Right. They had no traffic jams to navigate. They had no telemarketers calling their house. They had no problems to solve, no bills to pay, no doctor appointments to keep. God gave them everything they needed and only one rule. And this rule was designed to protect them. I want you to get that. It really wasn't designed to keep God from blessing them. It was designed uh, to protect them. Mm -hmm. Can I park it long enough to tell somebody that if God gave you everything that you wanted and put no restraints on it, yeah. some of us would kill ourselves. Yeah. I believe somebody ought to be able to testify that I thank God I didn't get everything I wanted. Yeah. Particularly at certain times in my life when I was not able to handle it. Text says that God gave them one rule, not to eat of a touch, the fruit from the tree in the center of the garden. Text says that Satan in the form of a serpent is there checking out. Isn't it funny how wherever God shows up to try to minister, the devil has a way of trying to slip in. The servant is there and he's described as subtle, uh -huh. meaning that he's clever, he's cutting, cunning, uh, he, he's, he's distinctive, he, he's hard to describe. 
And, and the devil engages in dialogue with Eve. He asked her, did, did God tell you that you could not eat from every tree in the garden? Mm. To which Eve replied, we can eat from all the trees except the one in the midst of the garden. For God said, God can I say that again? Yes, sir. God said, yes, sir. if we eat of that tree or touch that tree, yes. we are going to die. Yes. Now in verse 4, here comes the biggest lie. Satan in essence says, you, you ain't really going to die if you touch or eat of the tree. Now you know the rest of the story. Eve ate, gave some to Adam, and Adam ate. They succumbed to the biggest lie ever told. Now, now I could end the, the message right there, but I want to just take a moment to help us understand the anatomy of a lie. Yeah. Of the structure or the internal workings of a lie. Jesus. First of all, what is a lie? Jesus. A lie is an untrue statement uh -huh. made with the intent to deceive. Uh -huh. Let me say that again. It's an untrue statement yeah. made with the intent to deceive. It's just not an untrue statement. But it's made Jesus. to deceive. Yes. It's a false statement deliberately presented yeah. as being true. Uh -huh. It's something meant to give a wrong impression. Mm -hmm. yes. that, that means that a lie is intentional. Uh -huh. uh, no, no one lies by accident. Uh -huh. we, we might make a false statement by accident. But we don't lie by accident. You see, the truth exists while lies have to be invented. The, the next thing is, why can we be so easily deceived? Well, truth of the matter is that we are by nature selfish. And we want our desires to be met. Most of the time, a lie is the easiest, cheapest, and quickest way out. Yes, sir. Your, your, your parents asked you, did you do something? No, I didn't do it. You, you know you did, but you tell a lie because you think it's the easy way out of getting punished. That therefore, a good lie or a good liar tells the other person what he or she wants to hear. And in doing so, the lie or liar focuses on emotion rather than on facts. It's done by mixing enough truth to make the lie appear realistic. Mm -hmm. that, that's what Satan does. Satan comes to us and, and gives us a mixture of the truth. But, but it's just enough truth that we will buy into what the devil is saying, knowing that ultimately it is a lie. Mm -hmm. In John 8 and verse 44, Jesus gives us insight as to how the biggest lie continues to impact us. He says, of Satan, you belong to your father, the devil, uh -huh. and you want to carry out your father's desire. Mm -hmm. But your father was a murderer from the beginning, uh -huh. not holding to the truth. Yes. For there is no truth in him. And when the devil lies, the devil is speaking his native language, mm -hmm. for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yes. Yes. Reminds me as I get ready to go to my seat of a story that I read not too long ago of a man who was passing by in a neighborhood and he saw a sign in the yard that said, Talking Dog for Sale. Mm. He's curious and he goes up to the porch, rings the doorbell, and asks the owner if he has a talking dog for sale. And if so, could you see him? And the owner said, he's out in the backyard. The man went out in the backyard and he saw the mud just sitting there. Mm -hmm. He says to the dog, are you the talking dog? Mm -hmm. And the dog says, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. And the man said, well, tell me your story. Mm -hmm. And the dog said, well, when I was just a young puppy, Come on. I discovered my gift of talking. Uh -huh. I always wanted to help the government. 
So I told the CIA about my gift. And in no time, they were jetting me from country to country. And I was sitting in rooms with spies and world leaders because no one figured that a dog would be able to eavesdrop or know what was being said. He said, I became one of the most valuable spies. I did that for about eight years. And then I got tired of all the travel. So I decided I'd settle down and I signed up for a job at the airport right. working undercover security. Right. I was awarded a batch of medals for my service. Mm. Later, I got married mm. and my wife had a mess of puppets. Right. And now, yes, I'm just retired. Uh -huh. The man was amazed. He went back in the house and asked the owner how much do you want for the dog? And the owner said, give me ten dollars and you can have him. The man said, why would you sell such a valuable dog for ten dollars? The man said, I'm going to sell him because he ain't nothing but a lie. Everything he told you was a lie. He ain't done none of the stuff. Sometimes we invent lies and the lies are not designed to hurt anybody else. They may hurt us. Amen. We might convince ourselves and lie to ourselves that we're not good enough or we can't do this. But the Lord says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And if you're not in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, let me give you some truth that you can stand on. And that truth is that the Lord says that I'm going to prepare a place for you, but I'll come back and receive you unto myself that where I am, that you may be also. As we hear from our souls, we extend an invitation. Seek ye the Lord. Father God, may be found. Call us 
says. Reach out to us and we will gladly embrace you in the fellowship of this church family. Yes, God. Today that you would bless this house and every house. 